Welcome, everybody. Uh, glad to have you all with us. My name is Adam Springwater, and I'm a Senior Client Relations Manager with HiSet. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. We're coming out of this uh, one-year vortex of COVID, and what my goal today is in the next 25 minutes um, to present you some information that will provide you with some tool you can use, some nugget that you'll be able to take back to your program and make a difference in the important work that we're doing in HSC. And this past year, that work has been so critical. I want to thank Dan and Greg for inviting us uh, to join them. Uh, it's just a, it's a great opportunity. And for those of you that are using the high set, I hope to provide information that will help you. Um, if you email me, and my email is my first initial last name, a springwater at ets.org. Dan, I hope you're, you can put that in the chat box for everyone. Chat box goes away when I present. So a springwater at ets.org. I will send you a PDF of all the slides I'm using, because as you're going to see, there's going to be a lot of links embedded in these slides, and we're going to cover quite a bit. Uh, so strap on your five-point harnesses, and uh, let's take a spin around the track of HiSet and see what we can uh, learn and how we can help each other. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the challenges, prep, what the options are currently right now. Many of you are familiar with computer-based testing and paper-based testing. There is an at-home option. And then we'll look at some resources to adult educators and test takers. Now, uh, Dan is right. I am going to provide you with a lot of information. And my goal today is not necessarily to single out any particular piece, uh, but to provide you kind of like a flash of the Rolodex. Now some of you know how old I am. If you don't know what that is, turn to the old guy next to you and ask them what a Rolodex is, but basically an index file, a reference page. And if you ask for that, if you email me for that PDF, then you'll be able to reference each of the slides with the links on them. So let's take a look at the current challenges to adult ed and HSE high school equivalency. Um, one of the main challenges that all of us know is we've all had to shift to distance learning. There's less direct access to students and it has been hard to motivate forward progress, which has been incredibly frustrating. Because up until COVID, one of our big issues is we had this super low unemployment rate. So although we all recognize how getting your HSE, improving your, your high school, your education level will improve your income earning abilities, most people, especially in the adult ed programs that I work with, and I've been an educator for over 30 years in four different districts, but the programs I worked in and worked with and my colleagues were all frustrated because people were working so much that finding the time. Now, everyone has the time, but the test centers are closed. So one of the solutions that we've come up is, is you know, pro-literacy and new readers, these different resources that we have to try to increase uh, resources for educators, including professional development webinars like this one, and to find new ways to engage these students in this virtual platform, which as we come out of COVID and we all get our shots is not going away. So it is now another tool. So in a terribly hard lesson to learn. We have taken this adverse situation and adult ed programs around the world and around the country, especially our country, have really risen to the challenge on how to reach their students. Um, so we, you know, there's less test centers, so we have at-home testing. There's uh, increased testing population, so we create more webinars and information. We're going to take a look at some of those things. So, ETS provides a very easy to navigate uh, web page. Um, if you go to our ETS.org site, you can find adult ed programs near you uh, that are offering the high set or just offering HSE instruction. If you're an adult ed program and you'd like to be listed on this, please email me and let me know. But most of you are familiar with this page for test takers, you can click it, any zip code, city, uh, state, and find an adult ed program. Um, you can narrow it down even more specifically by city. And not only does it give you the the, the test centers, but it gives you the links directly to them and whether they offer paper-based or computer-based testing, addresses, phone numbers, get directions, schedule an appointment. So it's a very seamless place, place for students and for curious administrators to find out what's in your area and what's available. We're also available, many of our, as we know, many of our students uh, speak Spanish. So todos los uh, programas están, uh, como dice, uh, puedes, uh, my Spanish is pretty pretty street Spanish, folks. Those who speak Spanish, give me credit for at least trying, but all of our pages are available in Spanish. Uh, majority of the students I worked with were for Central and South America in one district I worked at. Very good, very hardworking uh, people, but uh, often needed the programs available in Spanish. Um, 
Hi, said customer service. If we were live and I, we're going to start doing uh, conferences again, live again. Uh, it looks, I'm getting invitations for the fall, as we all are. Um, this is the one that I always turn out to the crowd. I say, who here has contacted High Set Customer Service and what was your experience? Because High Set Customer Service has been outstanding uh, all across the board. And this is true before I worked for High Set. This is my experience. So we have Test Taker Services, 1-855-MY-HIGHSET. That's a phone bank designed specifically for test takers themselves to get answers to questions based on the perspective that they have. Uh, test administration services for those of you that run test centers, uh, either teacher, uh, chief examiners or, or test administrators, you know that you can call this and you not only get the task center, but you get the task rep assigned to your state so that when you, if you spoke to Luis on a Monday, you call back, Luis will call you back on Tuesday. Or if it's Daniel or Lisa or Ralph or Juliana, we have a team of about 15 task representatives. They do cover for each other, but when you call task, you're actually speaking to our people. It's not an offshore phone bank. Disability services, we're gonna talk about a little bit later. I was the RTI coordinator for my district. I've sat through many an IEP, as, as have most of you, I'm sure. And as you know, all of us are special needs. It's just not all of us have IEPs or have been diagnosed yet. And our disability services provides accommodations, and I love this, at no additional charge to the test taker or the test center, test administrator, so it's a great thing. And then technical support. Lord knows what those people do, but they do a great job. These are the people behind the scenes and computers and, and technical questions. And when your tech, when you have questions, you can put your tech people in charge of our tech people and they can speak that magic language that they speak and solve the problems quickly and efficiently. So let's take a look at the high set exam itself. Although we can speak about it with familiarity, not everyone knows that it's a test made up of five subtests between 50 and 61 questions. All of the multiple choice or single response multiple choice questions. It's a very, very familiar format. Uh, the, the high set was designed from the ground up to be accessible to the student to allow them to demonstrate content proficiency, which is a fancy way of saying help them show what they know without being nervous. And by making all the questions single response multiple choice, that allows the student to relax and not worry about whether there's going to be a drag and drop format or a higher order computer skill. Um, uh, we have one essay question. The essay question is scored by le real people. It's not artificial intelligence. And we have two double, it's a double blind test. And if scoring, and if they don't match, uh, or if they're not within one point of each other, then there's a third tester in the, and it's all double, triple blind in that case. They don't know who's the first, second, or third. It's a very accurate way, very fair way to grade the reading. And you can see that's between anywhere from 60 to, to about two hours. The total test time is slightly more than seven hours to take all five subtests. Um, you can mix and match. You can take computer-based or paper-based testing. Uh, you can do remote testing. You can take it in English or Spanish. We use that the disability services can accommodate the test forms to, for special needs. Um, you must take the official high test center. You must take the test, however, through a test center, approved test center, or through the at-home option. And you can check your state requirements for test eligibility. You can simply Google high set requirements in your state, a name, and it'll take you right to our page. Or you can go to the highset.org page and, and look up your state. Accommodations for disabilities. They will make many, many different accommodations. The most common one is extended time. Here's a list of them. It's by no means uh, co uh, comprehensive. PBT stands for, I always want to say peanut butter and jelly, but it's paper-based testing, PBJ. PBT or CBT, computer-based testing. You can see that extended time is really the most common one, although so these are, and it's not, each, the thing I like about the uh, disability services is that they make these accommodations on a case-by-case basis. So if you have a student who you feel or you are a student who feels that there might be an accommodation might be necessary, uh, please call Disability Services and they will work with even if the IEP is non-existent or missing or it's been years or it's just an intuitive hunch you have, they'll work with you to, to either qualify or modify the test. Um, you can take a look uh, at our website again. Here's the test taker bulletin. Uh, and you can submit, this is the form for requesting an accommodation. Very, very straightforward, very, very easy. Um, disabilities for accommodations have to go through our office at ETS. Uh, it can't be through your school or through the state office. It does have to go through our office. And then we coordinate with the test center to provide the accommodation. 
Some things don't require accommodation, so you can get larger print or highlighters or earplugs or straight edges, things like this. This You may notice I don't read slides to you. I, I'm expecting you to follow along, and if you want me to read the slides to you, we could do that at another time. Uh, please ask for the slides, and you can read them through carefully. I don't mean to skip things that are important or not important. I'm just going to treat us all like adults here. But these there are many things that we uh, don't need accommodations. If you're not sure, just email disability services or give them a call. The at home option is probably the most exciting thing that has come out of the COVID nightmare. And that is this ability to test, take the high set, but not necessarily at a test center, which for the large part have remained closed up until recently. So the at home option uses a feature called a service called ProctorU. And what it means is that the test center is ProctorU and they monitor the test at the student's home computer or at another location that meets the high set requirements. Now, it's actually very straightforward and very easy, shall I say, to register and, and, and take an at-home test. And we, we've had well over 20,000, and the number keeps going, uh, test takers take successfully take and pass their at-home test. We've had more attempted, but over 20,000 passing their at-home test and more, and it just seems to be increasing dramatically as the months go by, even with test centers opening, because it's such a convenient option. The test set sessions are available 15 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't know of a single test center that can meet that availability. I know a couple of corrections. Those of you who work in corrections, I did quite a bit of work in corrections. Sometimes y'all are there. Well, you're definitely there seven days a week. They're not always offering testing. And tests are available in English and Spanish. Um, test takers use their personal computers at home or in another secure location. Some test centers in some states, uh, while they were closed to the general public, had labs that had doors that led to the outside. They were able to clear the lab, clean, make it a clean room and allow students to enter and test without, and the supervision is done through ProctorU, a very exciting uh, feature that's been going on. Um, one of the things is the mobile testing is not supported on tablets or mobile phones. Sessions are monitored in real time with human proctors, so you do have to be dressed. It's as if you're going to a test center. We, early on, the biggest problems we had was people thinking, well, I'm at home. I, they got very casual, though you're being filmed and no, your dog or child cannot interrupt you while you're testing. Um, and the proctoring fee is $17.50 per subtest, which is slightly more than the national average between $9 and $15 for most test center fees. So there is a fee for this convenience. Um, the test taker still has to meet the state requirements of the state that they're testing in, and the computer has to meet equipment requirements. And the easiest way to find this out is literally to spend about 15 minutes on our webpage. You can just Google it, high set at home, and it'll take you to this page. It's four simple steps, equipment and environment, register what to expect and after the test. We're gonna look at it again today, but early on the biggest problems we faced, really all of the problems were people who had registered without looking at these pages. And they'd show up either without a proper ID or they'd have trouble and, and like that. We've had very little of that now. Most people are taking the time to prepare properly. So computer requirements, there's a lot of technical stuff here. I'm gonna tell you the short version. Can your computer connect to the internet? Does it have a camera and a microphone that do not require headphones? You can say yes to all those, you're pretty much good to go. There's other details so you can read through them. Um, the testing area, this was something we had encountered early on. It was very unfortunate. A student, a woman was testing and her child walked into the room uh, and you, that val invalidates the test. Uh, you have to be in a secure private area free of people and distractions. It's just like you're at a test center. You can't have food and drink and you, there's no breaks. You got to start and stop all in one session. You have to be at a workstation that looks like a workstation. You can't be in bed with your laptop. Um, Note-taking materials can be provided with a whiteboard or a workaround that a lot of people have done is you just take a white sheet of paper and stick it in a Ziploc bag and then you can write on the outside of the bag because you have to be able to erase all the information and show the proctor that you've erased it when you're done. So the at-home registration, I think we've covered all this state requirements and you register it through our through our regular page you log into our high set account uh select register for the uh, for the high set exam test at home options register choose the dates and then you just you sign right up and you have that huge window of opportunity seven days a week 15 hours a day um 
some accommodations can be requested. Again, you need to go through disability services in order to get them. Again, it's just a phone call or an email. Uh, the biggest problem we face is people not doing it before the test. They wait till test day and then it's too late. You, you gotta set this up. Um, tips for the test day, just make sure that you've got a clean, low lit room and that you've got your desk and area surrounded. Make sure you have your ID. If you're gonna use note taking materials, make sure that you, it's either the whiteboard that's erasable or that zip paper in the Ziploc bag. Uh, you need a mirror or a cell phone to show because you have to show the proctor your screen. A, hand, a little handheld mirror is the best thing to do. And be dressed properly and your ears and, and, and face have to be clear. You can't have headphones or anything like that. Again, this is all on that one, two, three, four checklist that I sent you and you can print it out. One of the other things is check in early. Don't check in at the time of the test. There's about a 20 minute check in period to start the test. And if you don't check in within 12 minutes of the appointment, uh, you forfeit the time. So you do have to log in. We recommend people start at least 15 minutes before. There's an authentication process. You still have to show your ID. Then the proctor will come on. Uh, proctor actually speaks you through this little chat window and will guide you through the test. It's that little blue owl chat icon. If you have technical issues, you can always, you can actually speak out loud and they are listening. You can also text the message to the blue chat icon. Anything suspicious, if it looks like a duck or walks like a duck, they're going to assume it's a duck. So don't do anything. Don't be furtively hiding your eyes or you know, darting around like things like that. And there's a video that you can watch that previews all of these things and makes it super easy. So that was the thing. I spent quite a bit of my 25 minutes uh, talking about at-home testing. When we look at the world of, of high set testing, that's been the most used and a, a rapidly growing feature that we offer now. There's a lot of other things we could talk about. I could try to move quickly through them. Again, if any of you want to follow up with me, a springwater at ets.org, and I'd be happy to spend more time or really go to the highset.org uh, website and spend about 15 minutes looking at the different options and you'll, you'll find it's very easy to take a look at. We provide a tremendous number of resources. Uh, Dan and Greg will be happy to talk about some of them as soon as I'm finished. Uh, we partner with new, new readers. We partner with quite a few people. We're, we're very proud of the partnerships we have and we have very strong relationships. But one of the things we provide is a test taker bulletin. Now, if you look at the reading these questions while I've been talking, you actually may notice that these are all the FAQs that are answered on our website. But some students are old school and you can actually print this bulletin out or send them the PDF for it. They can take a look at it themselves. And it answers the basic questions, how I test, what's required, what it costs, things like that. Um, the test at a glance is my most favorite document. I, I'm a, a teacher at heart and it provides, it answers the three basic questions. What's on the high set, how it's assessed and why it's assessed. It's available in English and in Spanish. And those are links for it. So what's on the test, the front page, it shows you a breakdown of things. So this is the math. You can see the categories. You can see that of the four categories, clearly algebraic concepts is the largest one. So if you're not sure what your math lesson is today, it's order of operations and fractions, decimals, percents, and exponents, because that is going to be the major portion of the test. But it not only tells you what's on the test, it tells you the content and how it's being assessed, the number of operators, breaks it down by content category, and then why it's on the test, the CCR, the career and college readiness standards that are correlated to it. So if you have other resources like your new readers press books that you're trying to use, you can correlate it based on the index, based on the uh, career and college readiness standards. It's a great resource, this test at a glance. And again, you can Google high set test at a glance. It'll take you right to the PDF. It does this for all five of the subtests. Math provides formula sheets and they're available in English and in Spanish. Yeah, when you're actually, it actually shows you what it looks like when you're taking the test. This is how you get to the formula sheet, and this is what it looks like when you're actually taking the test. So students can familiarize themselves. There's a calculator. Uh, it's a basic a four function calculator that they can practice with either uh, with calculators that you provide or with their own. But during the test, this is the actual calculator that they see. And there it is in plus. So it's a, a screenshot, a live screenshot of a student taking a test.
I'm going to spend a couple minutes with reports. Um, I am a bit of a numbers geek. I never thought I was. My first principal was a wonderful woman, Lynn Zimmerman. I actually thought I hated her. She was my boss for seven years. But for three years, she made me, she said, you're going to use your assessments to inform your instruction. And I, when I first heard that, I said, what do you mean? She said, every test or assessment you give is going to make a difference in how you teach your students. And that was work. And I got really, at first I was resentful, but then I realized that digging into data and making it accessible to the students was one of the most powerful ways to motivate them. When I discovered the high set, I was thrilled at the subtest score and the comprehensive score, how accessible they are to the students. So let's take a look at what I mean. So here's an individual test. And if you look at this, there's some basic areas that will show you what your subtest is. This is language arts. And here's the part I love. Over here, it's did you pass? Yes or no? Is no. I, I have yet to have a student not be able to figure this out. It shows you what your score is. It'll break down how you did on the separate categories. So if you didn't pass, you can see, well, I got 80, over 80% 80 in organizational ideas and language facility, but I better work on my writing conventions. In this case, the student passed, but gives you great information, very accessible. Same thing with the comprehensive report right there in the middle of the page. Did you pass the high set exam? Yes. No, very straightforward. It breaks down and then it'll break it down on top. Did you greet the criteria? How you pass out of the bottom? It shows all five of the subtests and what your highest score was. You may have taken it more than once, the date and whether again you passed or you did not pass. Very, very straightforward, very, very accessible score reporting. I love this. We have a lot of test prep resources. Uh, we have study companions, sample questions, writing responses, written response guides, practice tests, math tests, free practice tests, low cost practice tests. There's really not enough time to go into all of them. You can look at the link that I'm gonna, I can provide you. You can just Google high set resources. Uh, we have free printable tests. We link to Khan Academy. We have math interactive practice tests. We have some paid practice tests that you can order very low cost. We have an official practice test, another very low cost one. We have official guide to the high sit exam. There's also a book that Dan showed you a slide of earlier that I'm sure they're going to talk about also that New, Reader, New Readers Press provides. These are all vetted resources designed to help your student take and pass the high set the first time. We've also partnered with some free e-learning tools because a lot of students, now that they're working at home, are using e-learning tools and provides, we provide specific instruction on how to use these tools to help pass the HiSec. So there's a page with all of our HiSec test providers. Um, Dan, I think I've got about three more minutes. So I'm, I think I'm going to jump into this little section about coronavirus news and updates just real quick and then hand it back over to you. Mm -hmm. So if you have last minute con cancellations, you can call us at customer service, 1-855-MY-HIGH-SET. Test centers, the best way for us to know if you're open or not closed is if you tell us. So please reach out to your task reps and let us know how we're doing. We do remind students that they need to follow all local, local, county, state, and federal guidelines. None of those are, high set does not excuse anyone from wearing gloves or masks if that's what's required. Um, stay connected with us, go to the website, get the program newsletter, I get it. That's how I get my best up-to-date information. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Um, there's a lot of educator resources that are available on our page. You can click, uh, whoops, I accidentally, Click the resource. See how live my slides are? It's trying to open that page right now. We have resource guides. Are you ready? Roadmaps, written response. This is great. It actually shows you what the scoring rubric is and then gives you samples of actual writing samples that represent that passing or not passing. So you and your students can actually see. Um, I provide, my, my, me and my company provide a variety of webinars to support you and your program. So we're happy to provide webinars at no charge to you. So please let me know if you're interested in any of these webinars on best practices or uh, content specific. Um, test registration is very straightforward. Remember, you just go to your HiSET account. You can use credit card, PayPal, or test voucher. Um, and I think that I am out of time. Is that correct, Dan? I like to be timely. All uh, right. Well, it's really close. If you've got anything else, uh, you can. You well, I just want to show people that this is a, there is my email, aspringwaterets.org. I really appreciate your time today. I know it's important. And uh, thank you all for what you do for our students. It's so important. And thank we had, you. We had one question for you. And it is just from a, an attendee who wants to know, 
if Chromebooks are supported? No, Chromebooks are currently not supported, but they, we are working on it. Chromebooks, uh, you got to admire Microsoft. Oh, Bill Gates knows what he's doing, but Chromebooks is written with a certain type of language that requires the Chromebook to tie into a website uh, a, a, on, on the web. Ties into it. That's how Chromebooks communicate. They don't communicate with each other. They communicate via a website. And because of that, there's a security risk where people are accessing high sets. So you currently cannot take the high set for security purposes, although we have been working with um, uh, Microsoft on some formula computer language that will protect that. Good question, Laura. Any other questions? And I'm going to put my... Uh, my email in here, and I think I don't. I'm looking at the questions now because I'm not sure. I don't see anything else. Dan, I appreciate your time. Thank you all for joining, and I hope, I hope that I provided at least one nugget that was useful to you today. Oh, certainly, and I appreciate your help. And uh, I always follow up these webinars with an email. We provide them a, a certificate of participation, uh, and when I can, a copy of the slides. So if you want to send me the PDF that you were talking about. Uh, I'll make sure that goes out in the follow-up email. I'm going to do that right now, Dan. Perfect. All right, it's up to Greg now. And thanks again, Adam. Adam, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Dan, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me uh, share my screen here, and we'll get this show on the road. All right. How about big screen? That looks right. And you know what I what I think I'm going to do now is actually stop sharing my face. I don't know why, but some people say that they get distracted by my facial expressions. You know what they mean by that, but uh, there's a lot of information to share on the screen, so I would prefer that you be looking at that. So let me see if I can figure out. There, I'm gone. You're welcome, everyone. So again, Greg Stoltz, the training coordinator, for New Readers Press, and I'm gonna take the next 20 or so minutes to give you a pretty fast moving overview of our resources for the high set exam. I'm gonna lead off with what I consider to be a must have for every instructor who's gonna be preparing the students for the high set. And that's our high set exam resource book uh, from our Teaching Adults series. Just a quick walk through the table of contents. The book begins with a good overview of the test and tips for working with students, as you see here, using an interdisciplinary approach, motivating them to come to class, self-advocacy skills, and so on. Here we see content and scoring, and uh, registration, scheduling, accommodations, And here we have making the class and making the test relevant to students' lives, uh, building self-advocacy skills. There are detailed descriptions of all five tests. And over 60 easy to follow activities foster critical thinking. Many of these can be used as lessons. Very clear, very user-friendly. The activity is numbered and in bold text. The purpose of the activity, the method and suggestions all laid out really nicely as you see here. Purpose, method, suggestions, usage. And again, many of these I would use as a, as a lesson plan. Some more study of models, teaching language and writing conventions in context. Valuable appendices include assessment targets, essay rubrics, uh, 
templates, webs, depth of knowledge, handouts, graphic organizers, and a lot more. Here's a quick example showing reading assessment targets. Right. By the College and Career Readiness Anchor Standards. And this, I love this, from Executive Director of Tarrant Literacy Coalition in Fort Worth, Texas. Using this book to train other teachers in our own program and other programs in our community, this book is an excellent resource for anyone who's new to teaching students who are preparing for the highest set exam or those who want a good resource book to keep close at hand. We're creating a resource manual for our teachers and this book will become the heart of that manual. It's quite thorough in all aspects of the high set exam and it's very well organized. It's, in her opinion and in mine, this is really a, a, an essential resource. If you're considering core study books for your students, New Readers Press offers the high set exam prep series correlated to the College Career Readiness Standards and the 2020 High Set Standards, each 192-page book contains the content, practice, and strategy students need to pass the exam. Students begin with a pretest to determine their strengths and weaknesses. Pretest answer keys include explanations, so students can check their own answers and learn from incorrect answers. Each unit begins with an overview of the topic and a list of keywords. Vocabulary building stressed as keywords are also called out at the beginning of each lesson and defined in context as they work through the lesson. The students can even refer to a glossary at the end of each unit for vocabulary definitions. Really good focus on vocabulary in all of these books. Test taking tips and key points are called out to help students remember important terms, concepts, uh, strategies, and there are questions at the end of each lesson to provide practice. And each unit ends with review as well. Unit tests and the practice test at the end of each book are modeled on the high set exam. And there's an answer key with explanations, and that's provided for all tests and lessons practice questions. These are the robust student books. Our writing for the high set exam book is designed to help test takers write high scoring responses by practicing with 15 practice prompts. Test takers will be asked to read about two different perspectives on an important issue, and then they practice writing their own opinion on the topic, using evidence to support their claims. There's a planning box that helps them organize their thoughts, and a scoring guide, answers, and exemplars provide additional support. Next up, our best-selling score boost series can be used in tandem with the student's uh, core books from our high set exam prep series, or as a standalone option for building critical thinking skills and test taking strategies. Eight consumable workbooks say, from uh, like 48 to 64 pages, I believe, cover the essential skills and strategies specific to each test and are available in both English and Spanish versions. There are 11 to 16 targeted strategy lessons divided into three to four units per book. Each two page lesson, and I think that's important, each two page lesson includes an overview of the strategy, two example questions that model the thinking process, two special features, a think feature and a test wise feature, and then three to five practice questions that follow. Here's the lesson design. First, an explanation of the strategy is given. Next, there are two example questions. Using the think feature, which is written in the first person to model how the student should think through the problem. The example questions model the thinking process 
and they walk the student through the problem step by step. The test wise feature that I mentioned provides a test taking tip, strategy, or reminder. And now the student is ready to apply the strategy to several practice questions that follow on the next page. Two page lessons mean that it's digestible, it's not going to intimidate the learner, and you can see that it's distributed well. The new lessons cover item types specific to HiSET, this one focusing on the line of best fit in a graph. The math workbooks, for example, give students practice answering the five option multiple choice questions that are unique to the HiSET test. At the end of every unit, there are 10 to 20 practice questions. And then following those practice questions, the Score Boost Action Plan uses a diagnostic chart to determine where the students need to do more work. Strategy by strategy, unit by unit, Score Boost provides cumulative high set test practice. There's an answer key in the back, with answers and explanations, and what else? <laughs> and that's score boost. Now, here's a quick look at New Readers Press's online learning for High Set. The High Set courses are aligned to the assessment targets and they offer test specific at level instruction for those students who are ready. And I should mention for those students who are not yet at level. Uh, for high set test prep, we do have this uh, as a pre HSE option as well, and it's on the same platform. Very, very easy uh, to work from one to another. New Readers Press Online Learning for the high set is flexible. It can be used in a variety of different ways by a variety of programs to fit a variety of instruction models. It provides personalized learning empowering students through highly interactive features, uh, pacing guides, and a lot more that I'll go into here momentarily. And it's accessible around the clock on computer, tablet, and smartphone. The online learning course can be used in the classroom for group instruction, uh, for distance learning programs or virtual classrooms, for independent study to expand the capacity of your program or maybe even to serve learners on a wait list uh, or for blended learning, a hybrid model incorporating, incorporating the, the print materials with the online solution. Students can download the free mobile app so they'll be able to study anytime and anywhere. They can even switch to airplane mode and work offline. When they go back online, before they close the app, th their work will sync and all time and progress is saved. So what's in it? Well, for starters, analytics. Uh, analytics provides useful information for administrators, teachers, and the students. Interactive content, more than just reading and listening, that better engages learners in myriad ways. Guided practice offers tips and develops critical thinking. Interactive study tools like uh, online note-taking, highlighting, bookmarking. Uh, and for the pre-HSE course that I mentioned, there's audio support as well. Adaptive flashcards for vocabulary building. You can even create your own decks for flashcards and share them in a community. Games for engaging review. And the games, more than just games, but they actually offer, uh, if you got this question wrong in the games, here's where you can go for review or instruction. Self-assessment and review that lets students take ownership of their learning. And that, I think, is huge. You'll see a little bit more of that later. And 24-hour access that I mentioned before. And that, in my opinion, is a recipe for success. The students will quickly learn to navigate the online learning courses with ease. Each of the courses, math, 
reading, writing, science, social studies, begins by walking the learner through all the features they'll use so they can hit the ground running. Next, a pretest shows their prior knowledge, strengths and weaknesses, and sets the stage for learning and ongoing assessment. A structured study plan moves them through the course, starting with a unit introduction and objectives before diving into the unit's lessons. Each lesson is followed by vocabulary practice using flashcards and then practice questions based on the lesson. A unit test will help determine whether they're ready to advance or where they need to review. And each subject has a post test and a practice test as well. So when students log in, they begin on the home page that you see here. An adaptive course calendar with daily goals and course completion target dates tracks progress and serves as an effective pacing guide. The next button takes the students to their current study task in the structured plan. Every task is assigned a certain number of knowledge points. Uh, when the students complete a task, they earn knowledge points toward their daily goal. Uh, in this case, it's 25 is their daily knowledge goal. One knowledge point equals roughly a minute of study time. So today's knowledge goal is about 25 minutes of study time. Students can use this as a time management tool for study. Providing more than just linear instruction, the menu allows students to follow the structured course, access and complete work assigned by their instructor, and participate in private and or group discussions facilitated by the instructor. But students also have the option to revisit lessons, flashcards, practice questions, and tests at any time to study challenging topics. They can jump around if that's the way that they want to do it. Some are more independent in their learning. Uh, it's up to them. There are also four different games that make review fun and motivating. Now, as the students work through the lessons, interactive features like interpreting sources items walk them through how to analyze and interpret passages, pictures, graphics, maps, or data to answer, for example, the high set social studies questions. This, I think, is crucial. I, I, visual literacy is, uh, is, is, is such, uh, and, uh, is such a... Uh, such a challenge to many of our learners and we can't give them enough of this. Helpful tips give examples or add context in the form of vocabulary tips, um, in social studies, connecting the past to today. Also, uh, for all subject areas, real world connections, uh, helpful hints, and for math, math facts. Guided practice checks understanding and facilitates critical thinking providing or hiding the answers with just a simple click. A toolbar in the top right corner of the lesson features interactive study tools, which allow the students to highlight, to bookmark, and make notes. A toolbox includes one or more of the following, depending on the, on the subject in the course. Uh, there's a the calculator, um, periodic table, formula sheets, a sketch pad, and the scoring guidelines, you know, ru rubrics for the writing. Rating their confidence before moving to the next page of any lesson and seeing a recap of their work will help them decide whether they need to review or are ready to continue. Students can make the most of their review time by targeting low confidence level areas, right? Clicking on confidence levels. And if they were to see, uh, if they clicked on confidence levels here, then they would see how many of them were low confidence areas. Uh, they could return to their notes all here at the, at the top across from the lessons. Um, 
their bookmarked lessons, right? Uh, highlighted texts that they wanted to remember, go back to. They can use their practice question and test dashboards to track their scores and review the questions that they answered incorrectly. Students can even reset questions by clicking on reset category for the practice questions or reset test. Previous test scores are saved for assessing work and of course for measuring gains. And this can be done up to three times per test. For teachers, the learning management system allows them to access the course content, uh, initiate and monitor discussions via the study dashboard. The reporting dashboard lets them customize the study plan for students. Uh, they can uh, access instructor resources, send messages to their students, view progress reports at the individual student, class, and institution level. and or they can uh, download uh, and uh, the detailed time on task reports. Using their study dashboard that I mentioned, the teachers can use discussions to communicate with students one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Worksheets, uh, homework, customized curriculum, writing prompts, links, and more can be sent in the discussion box or as attachments. Moving to the reporting dashboard, curriculum content can be customized for individual or multiple learners and saved or modified for use with others. You may not want to have a student uh, take the entire course. They may, may, they may not need it from soup to nuts, but let's say uh, for mathematics, you know that they need to focus solely on algebra or maybe on algebra and geometry, this would be the tool that you would use uh, to give them only what you want them to do. Useful templates, rubrics, formula sheets, correlations, and more can be accessed in the instructor resources. Actually really good uh, lesson plan templates that are downloadable PDFs. <laughs> Teachers can create banner messages that are displayed across the top of the study dashboard where students can't miss them. They also have the ability to create and deliver in-app messages to a student's email box. So, lots of ways to communicate with the learners. In class reports, teachers and supervisors can view aggregate totals, uh, a class's average progress through the course, and their practice questions and exam averages. They can also see those totals and progress by subject, right here below, and click on Analyze to see even more, like this. Here, teachers can see individual student performance at a glance. Uh, they can see the top five lessons with the most low confidence levels and the vocabulary they're struggling with the most. They can see the five hardest practice questions answered incorrectly the most by category and the five hardest questions per exam, a, a drop-down box showing the five questions that are answered incorrectly the most often. And you can open those up and look at the uh, exact question as well. The individual student reports have analytics very similar to those in the class reports. Aggregate totals and breakdowns by subject. This should look a little familiar. Well, maybe not, you've only seen it once. Confidence level breakdown for lessons and flashcards with even more detailed information on practice and test questions like average answer times and scores. And real-time 
downloadable session detail reports filterable by class, student, course, and date range provide time on task for distance learning and for funding requirements. And this I think cool, capturing more than just session time totals, they show exactly where the student, uh, the student's time was spent, uh, whether it was it on tests, practice questions, uh, lessons, vocabulary cards, um, games, even idle time. If there was an, an idle time, not meaning that they're just sitting on their thumbs, but idle time meaning that they're logged in, but they moved to a different browser and now maybe they're, they're Facebooking it or YouTubing it or candy crushing it or something else. All of this is, uh, you know, they, is, uh, is accessible and they can, uh, and, and you can hold them accountable to it. The onboarding is actually really easy. Administrators can quickly create classes and add instructors and students. They can also upload multiple classes, instructors and students in, in, in a step-by-step -step using a single CSV file. Frequently asked questions, quick start guides, a comprehensive user guide are all available in the support section of the program or on the New Readers Press website. And we have training video videos and, of course, training sessions are also provided. And this I like a lot, and so do our customers, concurrent licensing. Concurrent licensing means basically less money and less hassle, because instead of purchasing a seat for every student who will be enrolled in the online program, you pay only for the maximum number of students who will be logged in at any given time. And this means that there's no more worrying about unused seats, uh, no revoking licenses, and then reassigning them to other students. Sign up as many learners as you want. Just remember that you have a parking lot that will, that will uh, hold you know, 50 students, right? So uh, sign up 1,050, understanding that only 50 of them will be able to be logged in at the exact same time. With a little management, you can stretch that, those licenses quite a bit. And that's a quick look at New Readers Press high set products. I'm going to stop sharing bring my mug back up and ask at this time if there are any questions. Uh, I'm assuming that, uh, that uh, Dan has been uh, responding to some in the chat. Yes, I've been, uh, I've responded to what questions we've had. I'm about to send out the final message, letting them know uh, there will be a follow-up email, probably Wednesday. In that email, I'd like to send them the PDF presentations uh, Adam already sent me his. I'll get Greg's. Uh, there will be a recording of this presentation. There will be a certificate of participation. And again, watch for that uh, probably Wednesday. Uh, I've also put in the chat, well, you can now see, Greg, uh, information for the web links, where to find the free HSE materials, the high set materials, and how to contact uh, customer service or their uh, express representative. If I could add one thing, Dan, it would be, and I forgot to mention, uh, that uh, if you're interested in, in learning more about the online learning for the high set and or for the pre-HSE courses, uh, then reach out to your, your state sales representative, and you can find out who that is quickly and easily by going to uh, readerspress.com. In fact, I'll show it to you very quickly here. Oh, newreaderspress.com. And here we are. Uh, and all you need to do is here at the top, find a sales rep and put in your state. And Alaska, Greg Stoltz, Arizona, Ken Barr, Arkansas, Rebecca Eller Molitas, and so on. Uh, contact them and say, hey, attended this webinar. Uh, high set webinar and uh, Dan and Greg mentioned that 
uh, you would give us a demonstration and tell us how we might sign up for a free pilot. Folks, that's a free pilot for your program if you've not yet done so, a 90-day pilot. Um, and uh, there are no strings attached. We're just confident that once you start using it and your learners start using it, you're not gonna wanna stop. And it's a very easy transition. You don't even lose any of the data um, transitioning from a pilot to a, uh, to a purchase if that's the decision that you make, uh, which many have. Okay, I don't see any other questions. It is a couple minutes early. Thank you all for participating today. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Adam. And uh, that's it for today's webinar.